question is this, hyperinflation like the Weimar Republic, or is it deflation, which is depression? We have an election going on right now between Biden and Trump. That makes a lot of the news. We also have COVID, which makes a lot of the news. The biggest news was not Trump, Biden, or COVID. The biggest news of all was Warren Buffett. Was that Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha, dumped bank stocks and he dumped airline stocks and he got into Barrick Gold. In other words, he shifted into gold mining and he and his buddy have badmouthed gold forever. And so that is the biggest news of all because it says something is really fundamentally changed in America. Trump or Biden have no possible power. They cannot stop what's about to happen simply because what Warren Buffett did signals a change so big in the global economy, not just the U.S. economy. So please pay attention. And, you know, Robert, you're, you know, making some observations that the mainstream financial media is completely ignoring. I mean, you're asking questions that not only don't they have the answers to, but they're not even smart enough to ask the questions. When you see a guy like Warren Buffett moving into a barrack gold. I just buy gold and silver because I started buying silver in 1964 and I started buying gold in 1972. And the only reason I did that is because in 1971, Nixon started printing money and, he, and we're a reserve currency. And the average guy has no idea. What does that mean, we're a reserve currency? What, what is the fractional reserve system? The average American, even the college professors, have no idea what that, meant, that means. So for all these years, Kim and I have saved gold and silver, taken a lot of heat from people. He said, well, you should be in this, you should. So no, gold and silver are what we save. We don't save cash. But it was hard because nobody agreed with us. You know, you mentioned back in 1971, we went off the, the gold standard, we did, but the world did not go off the dollar standard. The, the dollar was marked down dramatically during the 70s, but the world continued to hold it as a reserve currency. I think the significance of what's about to happen is the world is now going to go off the dollar standard. Well, people have to appreciate how great a benefit the dollar being the reserve currency has been for the U.S. economy. It's kind of like if you had a checkbook and you could just write checks and buy stuff. You didn't actually have to have any money in the bank. You could just write checks and buy what you wanted because nobody ever cashed your checks. They just circulated. People just took your checks and, and passed them around. And so you could live a great life and buy whatever you want if no one cashed your checks. And that's what's been going on. No one's cashed their dollars in. No one's taken their dollars and tried to buy anything that we make. They just hold them. They buy bonds, they buy stocks, you know, but they don't buy real stuff. So we haven't had to make good these IOUs. So we're able to import all these products and consume them, and we don't have to export products to pay for them. We're able to borrow all this money, but we don't have to save. The world does it for us. So we've had this whole bubble economy, this consumer-based economy that is on the foundation of the dollar's reserve currency status. When the world rejects that and goes back to the gold standard, which is not this archaic thing, people think, oh, well, that's the Stone Age. We were on the gold standard until 1971. Even though it was a dollar standard, the dollar was backed by gold and redeemable in gold. So the dollar was as good as gold, at least that's what everybody thought uh, who, who signed on to this. So we're gonna go back to the monetary system that existed before the dollar was a fiat reserve currency. The world is going to back their currencies by gold rather than US dollars. That doesn't mean we're gonna be transacting in bars of gold. It just means that foreign central banks are gonna hold more gold. And that's gonna be the primary asset that backs up their currency. And so in that world where the world is using real money and not dollars, now America is just another country. Now, if we want to consume, we have to produce. We just can't you know, run huge trade deficits. If we want to run these big government deficits, we got to fund them. Americans have to save. Americans have to lend this money to the government. You know, we can't, we're not going to get it from the Chinese or the Japanese or the Saudis. Now, if we try to get it from the Federal Reserve, if the Fed is just printing money, but the dollar is not being held as a reserve currency, then we just have massive inflation or maybe even hyperinflation. Big day of reckoning coming for America, and it's coming very soon. 
So some people say we're going into inflation and other guys are saying we're going to deflation. You always had really the background, the solid information. Tim and I just save gold and silver. We're not, we don't go into the depth you go into it. But when you come back, there's inflation or deflation. And you know, for most, for me, when I studied all this, it was the hyperinflation of what on in, in Germany, the Weimar Republic, which brought Hitler to power. And that's what's going on in Venezuela right now and Zimbabwe. Big question is this, hyperinflation like the Weimar Republic or is it deflation, which is depression? Which way? We might actually have a little of both, but first of all, you have to understand the definition. So inflation is an expansion in the money supply and deflation is a contraction. So clearly money supply is going way up. So we know that is inflation. But most people are concerned about prices, right? When they're talking about, are we going to have inflation? Are, is the consumer price index, are prices going to go up? Or are prices going to come down? Are we going to have deflation in that respect? It, it depends on how you measure it. So let's assume you want to measure prices in terms of gold. How much are prices going to change? If you have an ounce of gold and you want to buy stuff with an ounce of gold, is stuff going to get cheaper or is it going to get more expensive? I think prices are going to crash in terms of gold. I think everything is going to get cheaper. Asset prices will get cheaper. Stocks, real estate, you know, bonds, uh, you know, works of art, you know, whatever. Things are going to go down in terms of gold and even the cost of living food, energy, clothing, uh, medical care, all the things that you buy, if you actually have gold, you're gonna see prices falling. If you wanna call that deflation, then that's what we're gonna get. What's, what's just said yeah. is crucial because if you don't have gold, the cost of food will go up. If you have gold, the prices come down. We've had a massive bubble that is going to deflate. This bubble that the Federal Reserve blew is gonna deflate. So we're gonna see that but only if you look through the prism of gold. Because the problem is the Fed is gonna print so much money that it's gonna disguise the collapse of that bubble. We have a lot more debt now than we did then. We made far more mistakes because interest rates were even lower for an even longer period of time. So the Federal Reserve has screwed up the economy in a far worse way than it did before. And now you throw what's happened since COVID-19 into the mix, uh, where money printing is off the charts. Uh, QE, you know, four is already bigger than one, two, and three combined, where you have the Federal Reserve right now printing more than 60 cents out of every dollar the federal government is spending. I mean, this is unprecedented that we're printing more money than we're collecting in taxes. And, and this is just going to accelerate. You're not gonna see real estate prices crash or stock prices crash because the value of the dollar may crash more. So it's like, you know, if I'm in a car and I'm going backwards at 20 miles an hour and the car next to me is going backwards at 30 miles an hour, it may look like I'm going forward, but I'm not. It's just, I'm not going back as quickly. So you could be losing wealth in an asset that you think is appreciating, but it's not because you're measuring the value of that asset in a currency that's losing value faster than the asset itself because the Federal Reserve can print an unlimited amount of money. There's nothing that stops them. And that's what they're doing. So they're gonna destroy the value of the dollar. It, from the point of view of paper money, the price of everything is gonna go up. But I think you're gonna see a big realignment of prices. I actually think that all prices will rise in terms of paper money. But I think the cost of living, food, energy, health, clothing, and stuff like that, that's gonna go up more than stocks and real estate. Okay. Right? If the dollar became worthless, then the price of gold would be infinite. I think gold can easily, at this point, go to 10,000, 15, 20,000. Uh, you know, it's gonna go much, much higher. You can have the Dow Jones at 50,000 and gold at $50,000 an ounce. But if gold is $50,000 an ounce, you have to understand that 50,000 on the Dow may mean that you're poor. People are gonna lose wealth as right. the cost of living rises and more than the assets. Yeah, and that's what happened in the Weimar Republic, just which brought Hitler to power was that the story is, you know, somebody went to the uh, supermarket or the butcher shop with a wheelbarrow full of money and he went in to buy a pound of pork. And when they came out, they stole his wheelbarrow and left the money. You know, that's the classic story that goes around in, in our world.
Well, I think that when we get this reset of the global monetary system, where the dollar is no longer the reserve currency, the, the country that has benefited the most from this is the United States. Well, it's the emerging markets that have suffered the most. They're the ones that have been supplying the United States with a lot of the goods that we don't produce, but that we consume. Right. And they've been loaning us a lot of their savings. Uh, and so what happens is uh, their standard of living has been suppressed. They can't consume as much as they produce. And a lot of their savings have been loaned to us as opposed to invested productively in their own economy. So once the dollar crashes, you have all this emerging market debt that's dollar denominated that basically gets forgiven. And, and now I think these currencies appreciate, that takes a lot of pressure off their economies, their domestic inflation rates, their interest rates. And so I think that they're gonna just, it's like a giant weight that's been lifted from their shoulders. They're gonna finally get to eat the fruits of their own labor. They're going to consume their production and they're gonna invest their savings productively Productively in their own economies. They're not going to squander it on U.S. Treasuries. So I think there's a lot of opportunity. Americans are going to see their standard of living go down, but across a lot of, a lot of the emerging markets, you're going to see a big increase in the standard of living and relative wealth. I think, uh, you know, asset prices are going to move up as people in those countries become wealthier on a relative basis. Americans are going to be poorer and therefore our assets are going to get marked down. And then if you just look at these emerging markets, if you look at the stock prices, and compare them to what you're paying for stocks in the United States. I mean, this is the cheapest they've been in maybe a hundred years. So uh, that's so called in our lifetimes. You know, we, we haven't had an yeah. opportunity to sell U.S. stocks and take the money and buy emerging market stocks at such a favorable exchange rate as what we can see right now. Okay, we have an election going on right now between Biden and Trump. That makes a lot of the news. We also have COVID, which makes a lot of the news. But in my opinion, biggest news of all last few months was that Warren Buffett, Oracle of Omaha, dumped bank stocks and he dumped airline stocks and he got into Barrick Gold and CNBC and the other CNBS as they call it. They don't cover it. Nobody covers it. You know, I mean, Trump or Biden, it's important, but Buffett going into Barrick Gold, if you could get into Buffett's head, that's, that's two heads, you know, two thoughts. Why would CNBC not cover it? You know, why would they not cover it? And the other question is, what are they afraid of? What do you think Buffett sees? that I know you see, I think I see, because I've been in it since I was a kid, but I see something not so good. And this is global again, not US. What do you think he see? Obviously, the, the talking heads on CNBC want to put on a happy face. They want to pretend everything is great. The economy is great. There's nothing to worry about. And so they're really just dismissing the significance of what Buffett has done by saying, well, it's a small investment, uh, which is true, but we have no idea how many more shares he may have purchased since the end of the second quarter. And of course, how do we know that this is just not the beginning of a major shift? I mean, every journey starts with the first step. And so how do we know that Buffett has completed his journey into the gold sector with this purchase of, of Barrick? We don't, but the me mainstream financial media is afraid to look into the aspect what it might reveal. And, you know, they normally love talking to Warren Buffett. Nobody has interviewed Warren Buffett. I haven't seen a single interview since this news came out where he was on any network uh, discussing why that decision was made as to what does this imply as far as what Warren Buffett's outlook is for the U.S. economy and for the dollar and for inflation and, and, and for the bond market. When Buffett was you know, bad mouthing gold in the past, I mean, what he really was saying was that gold is not the best hedge against inflation. It's a non-productive asset. It just sits there. And Warren Buffett always says that he likes to own businesses, not even stocks. He likes to buy businesses. And obviously he does that through the stock market, but he's investing in underlying businesses because he thinks that businesses provide a good hedge against inflation. They have real assets. You can raise prices. It's just that now I think Warren Buffett realizes that inflation is going to be much worse in the future than it's been in the past. And Warren Buffett knows that during periods of very high inflation, which we've had in the past, that's when gold really shines. So I think what this move shows you is that Buffett now understands that the traditional hedges that he's used for inflation are not going to be adequate for the severity of what's coming. Because Buffett knows what inflation is. He defines it as an increase in the money supply. He correctly labels it as a tax. And so he knows it. He knows 
it's just not rising prices. He could see the Federal Reserve debasing the dollar. He sees the deficits. He sees all the spending. And so he understands gold's going to go up. But I think the reason he chose to buy a gold mining company rather than just the metal is because he likes the business aspect of Barrick Gold because they make money mining gold. And he's not even just buying their income streams. But when you buy Barrick Gold, you are in effect buying all the gold in the ground in the mines that they own. So it is a very, very bullish bet on gold. And it's a way for Buffett to be in the business of mining a commodity that he knows is going to be far more valuable in the future than it is today. I think that Buffett is a pretty shrewd guy, the people that work for him. And if I'm right that this is just the beginning of a major shift, and if Warren Buffett intends to buy more gold stocks, the last thing he would want to do is come out in the open and tell everybody why he's buying because he doesn't want to have a lot of competition. I mean, a lot of people are going to follow in his footsteps. And if he wants to buy gold stocks, he wants to do it quietly. He doesn't want to make a big deal about it. He just wants to buy as much as he can for as cheap as he can. No different than Buffett dumping bank shares and airlines and quietly sliding into gold. This is not good news, sports fans. But if you're prepared, you can be prepared.